remains a fact that three and four of the products that are launched go on to not become successes on the marketplace. And we also know the number of failures is rising. We all have a vested interest in understanding innovation, that purely defined thing, how it's measured, and how that helps. The pharma model has been largely unchanged uh, for decades. But I think if there's going to be an inflection point in pharma, it's likely to come from outside of pharma. And we believe that creativity is the seed for innovation. And thinking unconventional can yield some uncommon results. Innovation and invention are not the same. Being a pioneer does not equal innovation. We've, we are fortunate to have the first digital medicines application to be accepted anywhere in the world. That's nice, but to date, we're simply a pioneer. Perhaps we'll blaze a trail, but it is not innovation until that nascent technology delivers <coughs> something that is of value to the community at large and to the world. It's all about the best science. And if you don't have the best scientists internally, the best scientists externally are not going to want to work with you. So we've spent a lot of time building an extraordinary group of, of, of scientific expertise. And as a result, they've been connected to some of the great scientists in the world. We've um, enjoyed a tremendous number of collaborations and, and many of them uh, very, very fruitful. We met the people of Pharmacyclics uh, and we realized that they were ahead of us. They had a better drug than we had. We stopped our internal program. We were able to make a license with Pharmacyclics and uh, rapidly we worked with a very small company uh, to develop um, Groovica. It was always based on trying to solve a very specific problem and then looking anywhere in the world who could help us solve that problem as quickly as we possibly could. And then you can say that was very innovative. Um, Teva is in a state of disruptive transformation. It's really a remarkable uh, uh, place to be right now in many ways. There's a massive paradigm shift in who we serve. Uh, so we I see ourselves not just serving the patient anymore. We know that the caretaker, the family, the community in which that patient resides and lives is deeply involved. And we also see ourselves not just treating the sick, but rather promoting health in a much more fundamental way. So disruptive innovation isn't always about new things, but it's often about old things joined together in new ways. Taking what we learn from the generic side and being able to transform that, innovate using existing molecules to create all kinds of new opportunities, improving adherence, compliance. And you know, we also are looking at ways we interact with patients, monitoring adaptive clinical design, changing the ways we monitor, from endpoint monitoring to continuous monitoring. What we've created um, uh, ourselves at IDEA this year is something we're calling the IDEA Index, which is a way of celebrating the innovation that we admire. Um, and that, uh, and that we believe will make a difference in the next five or ten years. So what we've done is we've picked ten companies that we believe are the most exciting in our space. I mean, our belief is that innovation is really accidental, is that if you try to deliver great work to the, to, to the, to the world, that, that that tends to lead to the right kind of behaviors. And the more you try and deliver profit to the world, the less that innovation tends to happen.